Hello. Do you know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God? Listen carefully as Bishop Humphrey Irumaka brings you the rightly divided word of truth and watch as your life changes for the better. Tonight, if you have your Bible with you, or wherever you are, I want you to turn with me to the book of Jonah, chapter 1. I read from verse 1. Jonah, chapter 1, from verse 1. The Bible says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amitia, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a sheep going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every one man unto his God, and cast forth the wares, but there was nothing in the sea to lighten it. But Jonah was gone down into the, sea, the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah, and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord, and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Speak to us tonight and bless us. In Jesus' mighty, powerful name we have prayed. Shout a good amen. Tonight I want to talk to us on what I call the pursuit of destiny the pursuit of prophetic destiny can you say that to me back again the pursuit of what of prophetic destiny the pursuit of prophetic destiny now when you study the book of Jonah When you study the book of Jonah, it talks about destiny lost and destiny recovered. Tonight, under the sound of my voice, some very great things will happen on this ground tonight. There are some of you here in all ages where we are, not by our choice, but by his choice and what he has chosen about us and at one time in life God will communicate that purpose to you and when you understand that purpose your hunger for it will make it quicker that's why no matter who you are you need the word of God in your life you need to be in church. You need to be among God's people. You need to be in the place of prayer. You need to be where you will be able to hear and know what God is saying concerning your life 
at any given point in time. When Jonah was asked to go to Nineveh and preach the word of God to the people of Nineveh, Jonah refused. There are reasons why Jonah refused. The country of Nineveh was the big city or capital of Assyria. And Assyria was the arch enemy of Israel that defeated and destroyed Israel in 722 BC. The book of Nahum explains better the nature of the people of Nineveh their level of cruelty at war, the level of prostitution, the level of debauchery, the level of um, wizardry, witchcraft operation in the country of Nineveh. And Jonah, as a child, saw when the people of Assyria defeated Israel. He saw how the, the tummy of women were open and fetus were brought out. He saw how people were slaughtered on the street. And if there was one expectation that Jonah had from God, is that God will one day destroy Nineveh. He was decisive about it. That no how will God not destroy Nineveh. He's passion, he was passionate about it. Even as a prophet, he prophesied about it. But instead of God destroying Nineveh in his time, God saw the passion and the hatred in his heart against Nineveh. And God now assigned him to go to Nineveh and declare the word. He knew God. He knew the power of the gospel. That if he goes to Nineveh and declare the word, that God will forgive and save Nineveh. So he made up his mind without the word going forth, there will be no repentance. And that word will not come forth so that Nineveh will not repent. Listen to me, child of God. God has a redemption plan for everyone on the face of the earth. There is nobody too bad that God cannot redeem. There is nobody too bad that God cannot recover. This was also the picture of Israel. Israel colonized God for themselves. Israel never wanted God to be the God of the Gentiles. Amazingly, this was the first prophet God was sending to the Gentiles. And he wasn't willing to make it happen. He wasn't willing at all. He wasn't willing. He insisted. God, you can't go to Nineveh. We own you. You remain here. And instead of doing that, he entered into a Tarshish sheep. Tarshish was a city known for making the best sheep. If you read through the scripture, you read about Tarshish sheep. Even when in Acts of Apostles, Paul was about to depart. He warned them, let's not leave now at Crete. They made up their mind, they must go. One of their confidence was that this is a Tarshish sheep. And as far as it's a Tarshish sheep, it's a safe sheep. So Jonah chose to enter a Tarshish sheep, which is strong enough to run away. But ladies and gentlemen, no matter the fact you can pay the fare, you can pay a ticket, you can pay transport fare, no matter where the vehicle takes you to, no man can run away from God. No one can hide from God. I don't know how you are here today. There may be something you have been running all your life from. Tonight, you will come, have in contact with God and you will agree with God and the suspended glory of your life will come to fruition. Shout Amen in the house. So when he entered the ship, 
And the sheep became boisterous, listening to me, child of God. As we are seated here today, everyone is pursuing something. Some people are pursuing the destiny of God in their life and some other people are pursuing vanity. Whenever you are in the opposite direction of what God has called you for in life, you are running in the opposite direction. And to so many here, it will take you many years before you discover that. That's why being born again early is a great grace. And that's why the Bible says the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. The day you know God, the day you know the purpose, the day you know how and why you are here on the earth, that day marks the beginning of your purpose. So Jonah refused. Instead, he decided to go in the opposite direction. But look at this. The Bible said, as he entered the ship, God sent a great tempest. Every tempest that has come upon your life by reason of dis disobedience is coming to an end tonight. I say it's coming to an end tonight. That will not last longer in your life in the name of Jesus. God could not ignore him. God could not ignore him. The prophetic destiny of your life is not one of those things. It is the thing. Tell somebody by your side, the prophetic destiny of God in your life is not one of those things. It is the thing. God will go at any length to make sure he brings you back to plan and purpose. Say amen in the house. God did that as a wake-up call. And when you are in the opposite direction in disobedience, no prayer of agreement will come the storm. No coming together will come the storm. No binding and losing. No fasting, no matter the days, will come the storm. When we pray, it's also a time to listen to God. We could have just gathered here and pray. But when we gather here, before we pray, we hear the word of God. The reason is by such means, God can speak to you. Call upon me and I will do what? Answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And eventually, as he was in that ship, a great tempest came upon the ship. I speak to somebody here. May you not suffer this year the consequences of another's offense. Did you hear me well? Somebody's offense will not carry your head. Lift your hands and say, somebody's offense will not carry my head. I will not suffer the consequence of somebody's offense in the book of second samuel chapter 21 verse 1 there was a three-year famine in the land of israel and david inquired of the lord and said why has this great famine come upon us and god told him that it had come because of saul's bloody family and because Saul killed the Gibeonites imagine Saul when Saul killed the Gibeonites when the family of Saul became blood testy because of it a great famine lasted three years in on the land of Israel ladies and gentlemen whatever another had done Whatever another had planned, whatever another had done that had brought consequences upon your life, I stand today to lift it off your head in the name of Jesus. 
the whole people in that ship we are suffering we are about to go down because of one man's offense they didn't know what to do and somehow they perceive in the spirit that something is wrong somewhere and they got into knowing what it is until the lord fell upon jonah now if i were jonah and suddenly you came to a point that you now discover that you are the reason for this ship collapsing and everything was going wrong because of him all he needed to do was to repent at that point but he made up his mind instead of going it god's way i better die even when they casted lord they told him he told them throw me into the sea did jonah know there would be a fish to swallow him no he had made up his mind to die ladies and gentlemen there is somebody under this atmosphere tonight by the things you are going through by what even god is telling you you are not willing to push further you are not willing to continue even in ministry you are so frustrated there are a lot of debt around you there are a lot of frustration around you you have calculated the year forward and backwards when you sleep and wake up you regret waking up ladies and gentlemen you are not dying yet you didn't hear me even though it's your desire even though you had made up your mind to die like jonah jonah thought it was all about him as the sheep was tumbling a great fish was following it a great fish was following it because god know there is a prophet carrying my word in that sheep it's not about jonah it's about the word of god in the mouth of jonah that must reach its destination it's about the call of god it's about what god have assigned you to do jonah thought let me go let me die let me end it here god said to jonah it's not about you i have prepared a great fish to swallow you because that word need a different transportation to the destination ladies and gentlemen the troubles you are going through in life the troubles you are going through the several forces that have been released against you against your ministry against your marriage against your family against your business against your calling against your being a man or a woman it's not about you it's about the destiny in your life and ladies and gentlemen whether you believe it or not i speak to you tonight heaven will not be at rest rather great escort will come until that which is put in you must be delivered if you believe you stand on your feet and shout yes the fish swallowed jonah jonah opened up his eyes and saw he was not in the grave jonah was still in the belly of the fish there is something in you that must reach its destination that was the same experience paul had when he was in the ship and the ship became boisterous everybody threw things away jonah saw paul didn't know what to do he looked at them and said i warned you you wouldn't have departed from crete but since you have done it there is no problem for an angel of the lord of whose i serve and of whose i am has appeared to me and have told me that there shall be no loss we shall arrive safely why the word of god in my mouth i must appear before caesar caesar will hear thus says the lord ladies and gentlemen the word of god in your mouth must reach its destination you are a carrier of destiny not all about you but for the whole humanity humanity will suffer if you don't arrive safely humanity will suffer somebody tied to your destiny will suffer if you don't arrive 
in the name of the almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, you shall arrive safely. I say you shall arrive safely. I say you shall arrive safely. Stand on your feet and shout yes. The moment Jonah looked up and said to God, now I am ready. That was the only thing God expected. Say amen. That was all that God expected from Jonah. The moment Jonah said, God, I agree. It doesn't matter what I feel. Listen to me, child of God. God has called us to win souls. It's not about your feeling. There are people you preach to you don't like. But it's not your will. It's the will of God that will be done. There are ministries, if they have option to pray for criminals, they will tell you, no, our own is to pray for their death. They will die. Instead of repentance, no. They will tell you, your own ministry is to save them. Our own is to kill them. Which one is the will of God? Which one is the will of God? It's the same thing. There are so many of you seated there, no matter how we press you, you can't preach the word of God. You don't, you, you don't know that the next person's life is in your mouth. That was the problem with Jonah. At that point, he repented. Listen to me. Destiny can be delayed. It will not be denied. And when God shows up, he gives back the same original assignment. Right there in the belly of the fish, God spoke to Jonah. The same, the Bible says, and the word of the Lord came again to what? Jonah. Arise and go to where? Nineveh. At that moment, the fish vomited Jonah. Ladies and gentlemen, can you stand on your feet for now? Hear me and hear me well. This year, 2022, wherever you don't belong will vomit you. Who am I talking to? Everywhere you don't belong to. Tell somebody by your side, everywhere you don't belong to will vomit you. Are you listening to me? Who says amen to that? Who says amen to that? Wherever I don't belong to, it doesn't matter how long you have stayed there. The moment you realize that this is not where I belong, that system will vomit you. That group will vomit you. That setup will vomit you. That system will vomit you. Lift your voice and say, Oh God, I release the permission that where I don't belong will vomit me. Will vomit me. Pray that prayer. Wherever you don't belong, heat will come. Pressure will come. Something will happen. That place will vomit you. I have experienced that God will not allow you stay where you don't belong this year. In the name of Jesus, that job that I've held your manifesting destiny will vomit you. That quicker destruction will vomit you. That friendship will vomit you. Anything that have affected your destiny, cocooned and delayed, quarantined and trapped and stampled and stampeded, the purpose and progress of your life shall willfully vomit you this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. I have another word for you tonight. God will reroute you. Tell your brother, God will reroute you. <laughs> the Bible tells us that the mysterious things of heaven are known by the things we see. 
when you drive a car that have gps geographical positioning system gps there are times you miss the road the good thing about gps is that it will not ask you to go back from where you started but right there as you stop the system will route you the ultimate is for you to get to your destination listening to me some of you hearing me now you have made life mistakes yes there are mistakes you've made in life that have trapped you where you are choices you have made behavioral choices you've made past mistakes that have brought you to where you are i stand tonight as a prophet of god and tell you a rerouting is coming a turnaround is coming god is turning you around god is repositioning you he is not taking you back stop regretting how you started from where you are that's the essence of this crusade on this crusade tonight where you don't belong will vomit you on this crusade tonight there will be a rerouting i said there will be a rerouting there will be a repositioning god is turning all things good for your sake god is making all things beautiful god is overturning and overturning and overturning and rerouting till you get to your destination you may have been delayed comma is not full stop god is taking you from where you are to where he wants you to be shout amen in the house of god as far as you agree with god when god reroutes you you will arrive better than you planned say amen the bible say all things will do what work together for your good because you are called according to what his purpose jonah in the belly of the fish thought it was over but the moment he agreed to do the will of god his problem will be how do i go back to nineveh to start that was his thinking but he didn't know that the fish that carried him had a gps that navigated to the exact city where god had planned he would be you will not miss road this year you will not miss road ebenezer is in charge he is your navigator that's what the bible says. god orders the steps of the righteous you are not ordering your step this year he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name sake who leads he he will lead you this year the stone will not hit your leg jonah in the belly of the fish there was no instagram to mobilize the nation there was no poster to mobilize the nation there was no radio announcement there was no tv there was no facebook there was no advert of whatever but because god has rerouted his prophets he was to bring him at an executive platform the people of nineveh were full of idol worshipers one of the things they worship was the marine goddess and suddenly they heard that a big ship a big fish had landed as the shore of nineveh the news went to town everybody gathered the king gathered some of them thought it's an opportunity to offer sacrifice to the god of nineveh all of them came with a piece of sacrifice the king could not stay at home if the king were told that jonah was coming he wouldn't come if the people were told that a prophet in israel were coming from the land of their arch enemies they will not come but they all came to see a big sheep a big fish as they all gathered around this fish 
the fish began to quake and they were clapping. They said that God is moving. They spoke to the fish. They offered their prayers and the fish quaked. They never knew the fish was struggling to vomit an anointed man of God. They never knew the fish was exercising to push out a man with a staff of prophet and a scroll in his hand. And suddenly, the fish vomited a prophet. If now you there for Nineveh, why you no go believe? Am I communicating? The moment they saw a man, and the man said, I speak to you from the God of heaven and earth. Before he finished his sentence, they had all bowed. The king was on his floor. He told them, a destruction is coming upon the city of Nineveh. If you don't accept the message I came with. That day, they all repented and accepted the message God gave to them. Ladies and gentlemen, the delay of your destiny is because you are landing on a grand star. The delay of whatever that have happened to your life, it's because God is preparing you for a mega manifestation. In the name of Jesus. You had planned to die. No, instead of death, a fish swallowed you. You were trapped there. So that what God has put in you will be preserved. And that preservation will not be preserved forever without manifestation. Whatever God has preserved you for, the time to manifest it has come. Say amen. The reason why you are alive to today, the reason why all the accident has, that has come your way didn't kill you, the reason why you have been delivered from all those destruction is because there is something in you that will come to manifestation. And I stand by the authority of the word of God tonight to tell you they will not be preserved forever. There shall be a manifestation. There shall be a manifestation. You have been troubled enough in family. You've been troubled enough in marriage. You've been troubled enough in school certification. You've been troubled enough in the process of your qualification. But you will not die at your training camp. All those preservation is for a mega manifestation. And you shall manifest. Give five people a high five and tell them you shall manifest. Tell him you will not die at the training camp. You shall manifest. Even against your will, you will manifest. Because it's not about you. It's about what God has put in you. Say amen in the house. When we talk about pursuing prophetic destiny, many here will think we are talking about pastors. We're talking about being the next evangelist. Now listen to me. It must not all be dramatic. It must not all be ministerial. There are some of you here, no matter where God has called you, in any sphere of life, in the sphere of your profession, in the sphere of business, in the sphere of education, in the sphere of academics, in the sphere of entertainment, whatever that has delayed you is releasing you now. You shall manifest. The essence of this night is for a rerouting. The essence of this night is to recover lost destinies. The essence of this night is that God will go before you, break in pieces the gates of brass, cut asunder the bars of iron, and give you even the hidden treasures, even the treasures of darkness, that that which he has proposed you for in life will come to pass. Say amen in this life. 
Tonight is a night of total recovery. If Jonah could recover, you will recover. If Jonah can be vomited, nothing will hold you that will not vomit you. In the name of Jesus, shout amen like thunder. I want you to take a step tonight because we're about to pray. I will lead you in prayers in course of what I've shared with you tonight. It's not a preaching crusade per se. It's a prayer crusade. Is there anybody here tonight? You feel you have lost some ground. You may even be thinking that sleeping and waking is no more necessary. You are even telling God like Jonah, throw me into the sea. You are like Jonah, you are just, let's go, let's end it. I stand tonight to tell you, you are not ending it. Instead of ending it, step out here tonight. There is a reviving grace. There is power surge. There is a takeover. There is God doing something in your life. There is something God is doing. Is there a delay in your life? And because of the delay, you think you cannot recover. You think you are going to start all the way afresh. That's the law. But grace continues with you where you meet God. For anyone tonight, and all of us tonight, I want you to walk forward here and let us pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Take your steps and come forward to the glory of God the Father. Can I hear you say to God tonight, I will recover all. I will recover all. I will recover all. Nothing will stop me. Nothing will stop me. In the name of Jesus, begin to come, begin to come, begin to come. You need to pray that prayer tonight. I'm not hearing you pray. Ism, 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 nadindo. Ism, 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 nadindo. Onye wani, ezitaro, di mozia, hanapotam, onodem, ne metu ya lobi. to pray tonight amen lift your voice and say i'm here to pray tonight is there anybody here you have made some mistakes in life one mistake will not stagnate your life forever did you hear me did you hear me you are not going to reverse your age you are not going to reverse whatever God will start with you from where you are. Lift your voice and say, Oh God, anywhere I am now, that's where I'm not supposed to be, vomit me. Pray that prayer tonight. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I may have made mistakes. I may have found myself where I didn't plan to. Jalabota livra katamoski. Is somebody praying tonight? Lovarida boji magos kilibatola. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Jonah was trapped in the belly of a fish. 
But the moment he agreed to do the will of God, the system threw him out. You are coming out. You are coming out. You are coming out. Eva Dodoji, Bareto Akama Sukatuske, Viande Libo Zuma Brata Lababa. I say you are coming out. Can I see you push yourself out? Declare I am coming out. You can't hold me any longer. I can't be trapped any longer. Tell your mistakes you can't hold me. You can't hold me. I'm getting out. I'm set, east and free. Korabosh Katalaba. One mistake in life will not trap you forever. Labobi Aboba Bosaku. Yafakute Shaku. Sankro Bosuka. Ezoko Ritri Nemoka Masila. Yafalaboto Larika Boshi. Lalaboji Laba Hasata. In the name of Jesus. Shout a big amen. I don't know if you know what you have said tonight. Are you serious? Do you mean it? Do you mean it? Are you sure of what you said tonight? Are you sure of what you said tonight? You know, oftentimes, we impose our will on ourselves and think it's all about God. No. Tonight, God will route your will. Even against Jonah's will, God caused a fish to take him where his leg could not take him. Whichever way you have missed it, I want you to pray this prayer. On this ground, say on this ground, in any way, I'm heading to the opposite direction of your plan and purpose in my life. Reverse me. Reverse me. Reverse me. Pray that prayer. Anyhow. Anywhere. Anyhow. Reverse me, Heaven will put you on reverse gear. La fota no lo no shaka. Ya zuri bo rohosh. Ma fe de mo sakuli brades de la hatamaba. Reverse me, Lord. Gila do roho su mahakababa. Gika tuske pakode. Yeze la barabaka. I have made up my mind. I will not miss God. I will not miss God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord is able. He's able. I know he is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. For he has healed a broken heart and set the captives free. He healed the sea, raised the dead, and walked upon the sea. My Lord is able. He is able, I know he is able, I know my God is able to carry me through. Say amen. I, I can remember vividly how God redoubted me. When I finished secondary school, my father sent me to a man to train me in selling spare parts after a few months of tutelage i had a shop and i was determined to be a successful spare parts trader am i communicating with all my heart i was willing to give it my best 
there comes a time you pursue customers you convince them you go to the road you grab somebody you talk to him you bring him to your shop you sell to him when i made those efforts and i get people i convince them they'll start working with me and getting near my shop some other person will call them and tell them that that man you are following is a student he's not a trader the man will look at me well see my polished shoe and uh, the way i'm dressed the man will leave me right there and follow another person i will get angry to the point of going physical i did everything and when i come to the shop i will buy newspaper i want to know the news of the day and then when i convince the customer they say see now student see see newspaper for your hand the man will look at me look see the newspaper and say no this one is you they say he came for holidays the man will abandon me you know for me it was a fight for me it was like people were against me but i didn't know god was using that for that system to vomit me am i talking to someone am i talking to someone then when i got angry i went to pray and god spoke to me those people saying you are a student it's not their voice it's me speaking to you and in my estimation my thinking was where will the money come when you decide to do the will of god miracles will follow the moment i agree and left god saw me through amen god saw me through school say amen in the house do you know these days i go to a battle preach and some of those boys come to me they come and greet me and you know how they greet me they call me my lord bishop praise god is somebody connecting to what I'm saying today? I remember sometime I went to the US and my friends around me convinced me to pay a certain fee for them to help me file and get a religious workers visa. I actually gave them money. But before my eyes, they ate the money and they didn't file. I never knew the implication. If I had filed then, I would have remained in the U.S. Maybe for seven, six years. And at the end of the day, you may not get visa. Religious workers visa. By then, this church had not been built. By then, this crusade ground had not been acquired. By then... The level of ministry and manifestation I've seen in God's hand upon my life, we are not there. God will reroute you. You know, today I see some of them, they ate my money. But when I look at them, I'm far ten times better. They wonder why I don't fight, I don't quarrel. There are certain things that happen to you that you don't need to fight, you don't need to quarrel. God is using it to reroute you say amen in the house you have fought too much just tell god from today whatever you will use to reroute me and take me where you want me to be i give up every fight i give up every animosity what stopped jonah from doing the will of god was animosity was the anger and vexation he had over the people of nineveh listening to me your enemies are not God's enemies. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? That you hate somebody does not mean God has hated the person. It doesn't matter what the person has done to you. I read an interview. Nelson Mandela was once asked by a British journalist, why do you still relate with Fidel Castro? Why do you relate with Mao Gaddafi? Why do you, do you relate with... Uh, some of the people they felt they had strong case against them on human rights violation 
and Nelson Mandela told the West, one thing you people must know is that your enemies are not our enemies. You don't force your enemies to become our enemies. So many of you, you are making your enemy the enemy of God. No. God has a plan for everyone. Say amen in the house of God. Give up every animosity and release yourself in the hand of God this year. God will reroute you. God will take you where he wants you to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. After tonight, do we have the prayer lists? Have we shared them? Now you are going to share them. And tomorrow night, you are going to come with your own. Take time and write down some things you want God to do for you this year. And we will be here tomorrow. We'll give you enough time to pray on them one, two, three, four, as much as we can. We will do with a guest speaker will not do it better for us. Am I communicating? Make sure you have them written. Because the essence here is for you to stand here and call on the name of the Lord. And God will answer you speedily. In the name of Jesus. Whatever that has stopped you, that have delayed you, that have deceived you. Tonight you are recovering. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stretch your hands to me tonight. Stretch your hands to me tonight. And say this after me. Every delay in my life will deepen my foundation for a greater manifestation. Which better way would have Jonah arrived and preached one message that will save a nation except the way God has prepared for him. Say it one more time. Every delay in my life we deepen my foundation for a greater manifestation. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you tonight. Every delay. Every delay. Deepen, 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 deepen. Use it and deepen. Deepen my life for greater manifestation. Ishakodi Vazega, Mankre Lekota Mashiki. Every training. will better me for greater manifestation. In the name of Jesus, shout amen in the house. Pastor Dan, come. For 12 and a half years, This man of God here brought on this prayer ground a prayer request. And that is to say that a child will come forth from their marriage. I announce to you that at this same period of prayer, this morning, the wife gave birth to a bouncing baby girl. That same God is your God. I didn't hear you. That same God is your God. 
this year say amen in the house for this God is our God forever he will be our God in the mighty name of Jesus when such children are delayed they are coming forth with great destinies am I communicating they are not ordinary God has a plan God was putting everything he needed to put. And you were like, let it come. He said, no, I have not finished. When I'm through, the world will know. When God finished with Samuel, Benina had seven. But one Samuel was greater than seven. The Bible said, he that had seven, they had given themselves up for labor to be hired as for wages but God by whom all actions are weighed had done a great thing to you today destiny recovered delay is not denial a new day has come for you a new atmosphere is hovering around you in the name of Jesus God, who took the word in the mouth of Jonah to Nineveh? The word in your mouth will treat this destination. The purpose of God in your life shall be accomplished. You will never be the same to the glory of God the Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally tonight, you will tell the Lord, I will be alive to see what you have been preparing me for say amen. amen say amen. amen you know it's it's i hear it's a sorry it's a sorry story that women that have waited for five ten fifteen years went to the labor room delivered the child and died have you had such stories before no god will keep you alive to see that which he has been preparing you for Lift your hands and make that decree. Make that decree. Everything you are preparing me for. Everything where I'm going through, what I'm going through. Jadogo do moziki, lamveto masiki. I would be alive to see what you are preparing me for. I will behold it. I will touch it. Elebosha mahalaba. Yes, Avatila Borohosh. I'll be alive for I'll be alive to see that which you are preparing me for. I will not die in my training camp. Say it, you will not die in your training camp. Go de Mazi Lovo de Majila. Bori Baba Shika Sapa. Anyamabo. Awu ole bube gichi neke Imela Imela Anyama bo Awu ole bube gichi neke Ola kaki And I will see My hand will touch it Kondele bashala Pray tongues if you can my hand will touch it. I will feel it. 
I will carry it. No father, Zalabu only has it. Bela, I Bela, Anya ma bo ahu o alwe bube gichi deke alwa kati. sing that song again but this time around imagine you singing that song like Pastor Dan carrying that 12 year baby of preparation as you sing that song carry that baby in your hand carry your own miracle in your hand carry the suffering of years that God has used to bring you where you are. Imela, Imela, Anya ma bo ahu o alwe bube kichi neke wala kaki. Oh, 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 oh,
I said to somebody here, your testimony will be the next. It may not be childbearing. There are certain things that have been delayed in your life. Swallowed in the belly of a fish. But a vomiting is coming. The destiny of Nigeria must be vomited. Whatever that have delayed the plan and purpose of God in this nation. There is a throwing up. There is a throwing out. I said there is a throwing up. There is a throwing out. Your prophet will not remain in the belly of a fish. The supporter of your destiny will not remain in the belly of the fish. The information that will change your life will not remain in the belly of the fish. A news is coming your way. An information is coming your way. Grace is locating you. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. There shall be a discovery in this land. There shall be a recovery here. To the glory of God the Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, we give you glory tonight. We decree and declare. It shall come to pass. We have not spoken to you in vain. On this ground tonight. 20 years after. Somebody will remember tonight. Somebody will remember. A frustrated man. Will be reinvigorated here. Somebody will have lost hope. Somebody at the verge of suicide. Somebody who is saying. Throw me like Jonah into the sea. Let me perish. You are not dying yet. There is something in you. That will benefit your generation. And very soon. It shall come to pass. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate. hope you've been blessed by the word. For counseling and more information, please visit number 12, Dr. Fashion Street, Okota, Lagos. You can also call 0906-833-5605. We hope to hear from you. God bless you.